So let's quickly go ahead and add in some controls. So add another group. I'm going to call my group controls. And I'm going to add a sub event. And I'm going to add in keyboard controls, but I don't have any keyboard objects yet. So let's go to layout one, double click, and add in a keyboard input. If we go to projects, keyboard should now show up as an object type. So now under controls, I can add a sub event for keyboard on key pressed. left arrow. So when I press the left arrow, I want it to be able to move left, but only under certain conditions. So first, our block has to be able to move. And also, another condition, our block, we need to check if it's overlapping an offset with the board at offset negative block size, so one block to the left, invert, so if it's not overlapping with the board, then we can move left, and add another condition, block is overlapping an offset, the dead blocks at negative block size, also invert. So if we press the left arrow while the block can still move and we won't crash into the board or a dead block, then our block is allowed to set its x coordinate to self.x minus block size. And I'm just going to copy and paste that whole event. And I'm going to change left arrow to right arrow. I'm going to change negative block size to positive block size, negative block size to positive block size, self.x minus block size to self.x plus block size, and now I should be able to move left and right. I'm going to change my fall delay to 0.5 so that it will fall a little bit faster for me to test this out. So I can move left, it won't go through the wall. I can move right, that also will not go through the wall. So I'm going to let this piece set. Also can't go left, can't go right past those. I'm going to stack these up and see if I can move through that object. So I can move here, and it will also not go through the dead blocks. So everything appears to be working just fine. Now let's see if we can get our blocks to rotate. So let's add a sub event for keyboard on key pressed up arrow. I'm going to copy and paste my can move. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate 90 degrees clockwise when I do this. There's no checking ahead for rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it and then we're going to add we're going to add a blink sub event to check to see if it's overlapping. So I'm going to take my two overlapping ones. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to paste them here. And I'm going to uninvert both of them. And I'm going to change this to an or block. So if it overlaps the board or overlaps a dead block after I've rotated it, I'm going to unrotate it. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do rotate counterclockwise. So what it's going to do is it's going to rotate and in the exact same frame, if it finds out that it's overlapping, it's going to rotate back. And we don't actually want to check with an offset because we don't want it to be moved. So I'm actually going to change that to overlapping another object instead. So go back one, do another object. So there should be no offset numbers. So when I run this, I should be able to move over. It stops. If I rotate it, I can move over one more. But now I can't rotate it anymore because it's stuck in that position. So now we can rotate all of our pieces. I'm going to copy and paste that one more time. Instead of my up arrow, I'm going to use the space bar to make the block move all the way down. So I'm going to remove my rotations. I'm going to go to block following and I'm going to grab my block set y self dot y plus block size. And I'm going to paste that in the second half. I'm going to not make that an or. I'm going to invert both of those, and I'm going to add a while. So add another condition, system while. So when I hit the space bar and I'm allowed to move, 
while I'm not overlapping the board and I'm not overlapping the dead blocks, I'm going to move the block down one block size at a time. So this should allow me to hit spacebar and it moved the block all the way down. However, this is one where we do want to check the offset. So I'm going to grab those instead, copy them, paste them, and I'm going to change block size from X to Y. And we'll try that one more time. Now that we have some rudimentary controls implemented, next time we will implement being able to clear a row.